HTML5 overview. So in this presentation, we are going to learn the concept of HTML5, what is and why uh, you want to use HTML5. And uh, we are going to take a look at a few showcases of HTML5 technologies uh, browsing some websites. And uh, we are going to go over HTML5 features. And uh, we are going to see uh, HTML5 support in uh, browsers, modern browsers. Uh, and uh, then we are going to take a look at uh, how HTML5 uh, influence uh, the way that we build uh, mobile applications. And uh, HTML5 also have a great influence in terms of how to build web applications. Uh, so we're going to take a look at HTML5 enabled web application architecture uh, and, uh, and uh, how it's going to affect your future uh, web application development. And the last, uh, we are going to take a look at how you can get started. And of course, uh, you are coming here in this three day code camp. So you're actually getting a very good start on learning HTML5 technology. What is HTML5? You can think of HTML5 is a collection of many features and many technologies and many JavaScript APIs. So the goal of HTML5 is to bring the power of desktop and uh, multimedia vibrancy, I mean vibrancy of the multimedia experience to the web uh, while uh, amplifying the core strengths of web uh, of interactivity and connectivity. So basically we are trying to bring the strengths of desktop applications to the web. Uh, you can think of HTML5 in a concrete, concrete technological terms. Uh, it's a combination of HTML, HTML, actually you know next generation of HTML, and CSS3 and JavaScript. So these are three technologies that make up HTML5. So how did HTML5 effort, development effort, get started? So HTML5 is a cooperation between uh, two organizations, uh, World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, and another organization called uh, Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group. Okay. Uh, so in the beginning, these two organizations were working on the next generation of HTML5 in two different uh, paths. Uh, so uh, what uh, working group uh, was working with the web forms and applications while W3C was working with the XHTML 2.0. Uh, in 2006, they decided to cooperate and create a new version of HTML, uh, the, uh, that's the HTML5. So this is a timeline of the web technology. So HTML5 actually gets started in earnest in 2009. The design goals, major design goals of HTML5 include uh, to add new features uh, and new features should be based on existing and established standards. Uh, so we are talking about HTML, CSS, and DOM and JavaScript. And another goal is to eliminate or reduce the need for external plugins. Uh, for example, uh, re removal of third-party plugins such as a Flash for multimedia support. Uh, provision, uh, providing built-in markup, replacing custom scripting. So before HTML5, in order to actually add uh, some features, uh, you need to do some custom JavaScript coding. And uh, by providing uh, built-in markup elements, uh, these kind of custom JavaScript coding is not needed anymore. Uh, to support wide spectrum of computing devices, uh, including, of course, mobile devices. So HTML5 is a set of many technologies. So in fact, this picture shows uh, the uh, you know all different technologies make up uh, HTML5. So some of the some of these technologies are being driven by uh, what working group, and uh, some of the technologies are being driven by W3C, and some of the technologies actually driven by the communities. Why HTML5? So a few facts on browser. So these are uh, underlying uh, 
phenomenon uh, that is happening at the moment in the computing pl uh, computing landscape. So browser is becoming application platform of choice. So uh, you know if you think about it, a lot of applications are uh, in a form of a browser application, meaning web application, uh, instead of uh, desktop applications. So during the past 10 years or 20 years, I mean applications such as uh, Google Apps and Gmail and games, you know, this used to be in a form of desktop applications. Now uh, they are in the form of web applications, meaning uh, these are applications being used with using the browser. Uh, even on mobile spaces, uh, browser-based applications are actually gaining momentum over native mobile applications. Uh, so by native mobile application, we are talking about applications written in uh, native uh, OS platform like uh, iOS or Android. Uh, now the trend is that the applications are being, mobile applications are being developed uh, as a browser applications. And we're going to talk about this phenomenon and architecture in a bit more detail later on. Uh, innovations on browser has a huge it has been huge uh, you know one example is the performance of JavaScript engine in fact has increased hundreds of fold hundreds fold during the past uh, five six years uh, because of you know again the competition among browser vendors especially from Google uh, browser only platforms are becoming popular so Chrome OS and Firefox OS these are the uh, these are the uh, the OS is particularly designed for the browsers and they are fast and secure and reliable and cloud enabled so by having browser only platforms uh, you do not users do not have to uh, go through the overhead of general purpose OS platforms such as Windows Mac OS and things like that and also browser only devices actually popping up in the marketplace as well, such as a Chromebook. Okay, why HTML5? So these are concrete set of uh, technological advantages of using HTML5. First, offline and storage. So we can actually talk about these technologies in detail in the in remainder of this code camp. So offline, uh, let the users, uh, let the applications retain their state and hold data without a server. And uh, so, you know, by having offline features, uh, users will have a better uh, user experience. And of course, performance is going to be much better. Uh, better user experience, HTML5 enables web applications to be more responsive and creating user experience that rivals of their, uh, their desktop, uh, desktop counterparts. Uh, easier development. HTML5 simplifies uh, development cycle by letting you use the same technology stack across multiple platforms and devices. So these days, you know, developers might have to develop an applications, web applications for multiple devices, right? Okay. Uh, the uh, mobile devices using different uh, uh, OSs underneath, and different browsers, and uh, again, you know, you're talking about desktop as well as the mobile devices and tablets. You need to actually support all these different devices as well as different platforms. By using HTML5, uh, you can actually simplify your development cycle uh, by using a single uh, the uh, code spec, a code 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 base. Uh, HTML5 technologies such as the JavaScript and CSS and HTML have been around for a long time and they are relatively easy to easy to learn. Uh, broad reach. Uh, so HTML5 is supported in more modern uh, desktop browsers and uh, major mobile devices. And so there is no other technologies that offer this type of ubiquity. Uh, security, uh, native support in browsers for multimedia and other capabilities reduces the need for plugins, thus enhances the security because these uh, plugins might be in fact the, uh, uh, the point of uh, the attack, security attack. And lower cost, of, uh, lower cost and easier maintenance uh, from developer standpoint. Uh, again, you know, by having a single uh, code base uh, by su uh, and uh, supporting multiple devices and platforms uh, is, is resulting in lo lower cost and easier maintenance. Okay, so HTML5 adoption. So everybody's on it. Uh, you know, whether it's a small company or large company. So uh, you know, Steve Jobs says the world is moving to HTML5. Steve Barmer, even Microsoft, the world is pushing down the HTML5 path, and so are we. And of course, Google is on HTML5. Uh, you know, left and right. 
so this is actually famous, famous uh, the statement from Steve Jobs. Uh, so uh, it, it, I think it's 2011, uh, you know, Steve Jobs decided uh, not to support Flash on uh, the uh, uh, Apple devices, um, <coughs> iPhone, I, uh, iPhone uh, mostly. And uh, you know the reason he can say that is because uh, he knows HTML5 is actually uh, the dominant force at the time, and that actually happened to be true. Okay. Let me see whether this uh, website is still there. Okay, so it looks like it's still there. Uh, in terms of popularity of technology, you can see the job trends. So if you go to Indeed.com job trends, so let me actually uh, click this guy and see what is the job trend. Yeah, so uh, still HTML5 is top uh, on the job trend. Okay. Uh, HTML5 showcases. So we're going to actually go to a few websites. Uh, you know, right now these days, uh, pretty much all websites are HTML5 enabled. Okay? So this is not that much of a big deal. Okay? Uh, Apple, in fact, actually removed this website because you know, every page they have is, in fact, HTML5 enabled. So this is probably not a big deal. So if you actually go to this website, in fact, actually go to uh, their uh, Safari uh, uh, website. But they used to have HTML5 dedicated page that actually shows all the features of HTML5. Uh, everything Google is doing is HTML5 enabled. So in fact, if you go to angrybird.com, uh, so you can actually uh, install Play uh, offline. So you can actually uh, install uh, the, uh, the Angry Bird offline, and uh, you should be able to actually play it. Okay. So let me see whether I can install it right now. So once it, yeah, so this is actually installing, and once it's installed, then I can play this uh, application offline, meaning without the uh, network connection. So installing offline version and uh, 33% 35. Okay. Okay. So all right. So that's Angry Bird. Uh, this is WebGL, so we're going to cover 3D uh, technology in third day. Uh, the, uh, so this is the uh, WebGL is uh, one of those 3D technologies. So if you go to this website, uh, you can actually see the fish tank. Okay, so uh, let me see. Uh, okay, so you can uh, so you can actually select the number of fishes. Uh, you can change views. And advanced, let me see what, yeah, so you can actually control this thing speed. I think this is controlling the, the speed of the fish that goes, okay. Uh, and options, what kind of options you have? Oh, okay, so you have a tank, a museum, fog, bubbles, light rays, normal maps, reflection, or things like that. Uh, this is a Google body. So again, this is using 3D. Okay, I'm not sure it's actually con being connected. Oh, okay, it looks like... Uh, uh, Yeah, so some of these pages actually uh, removed. Yeah, so basically you can actually move around this uh, human body and you can actually see the muscles, only the bones and things like that. Again, it's using uh, 3D technologies of HTML5. Uh, this is a 3.js. This is actually one of the uh, uh, WebGL libraries out there. So this is used for creating a game. So let me see whether this is still being accessible. Okay, cool. All right, so you can you know you can actually move around this guy, and uh, you can give a different weapons, okay, uh, and uh, you can do some animations: stand, run, attack, 
and uh, what is this pain <laughs> jump okay and uh, let's see what kind of uh, skins I have okay so, yeah so you can have a different skin of that okay all right so this is uh, again uh, 3d.js uh, webgl library again we're gonna take a look at the uh, we're gonna learn about webgl as well as 3dgs later on in this code camp Okay, uh, let's move on to HTML5 features, quick overview. Again, rest of the code camp is to go in detail uh, of these features. So this presentation uh, is basically to give you a big picture on what technologies are available in HTML5. Uh, semantics, so it adds a new media element, a new structural element, uh, new semantics for internationalization, new link relation types, new attributes, new form types, and new microdata syntax for additional semantics. So these are, uh, there are a lot of improvement in semantics. Uh, presentation, so styling with a CSS3 is a big thing, which includes 2D transformation and transitions and 3D transformation and also web fonts. Graphics, a canvas element is added, and again, 3D support of WebGL, and, uh, the, and then it also supports uh, SVG. In terms of connectivity, uh, the one of the most exciting technology that is added is the WebSocket support, uh, which supports a full duplex bi-directional communication channel, uh, as opposed to uh, existing HTTP, which is the uh, uh, half duplex. Uh, one directional communication. Uh, cross domain messaging uh, and server side events and uh, next version of HTML, uh, XML HTTP request for AJAX operations. So these are improvements uh, in connectivity space for HTML5. And uh, multimedia, uh, audio and video uh, support is built in uh, in HTML5. Uh, performance. Uh, so uh, Web Workers is actually JavaScript APIs that you can perform some JavaScript code in the background. Storage, uh, application cache, local storage, and uh, Web SQL, which is deprecated. Uh, and instead, there is the index DB, which is actually full uh, database uh, kind of functionality built into your browser. So we're going to learn each of these technologies in detail, in fact, today. Uh, file access, you can actually access your uh, the uh, file system uh, in the sandbox file system through file access APIs. Okay, let's move forward. So those are the summary of HTML5 features. Uh, HTML5 support in browsers. So there are a couple of sites you can check uh, browser support of a particular uh, HTML5 technology. So one site that is the most popular in terms of finding out the browser support of HTML5 technology is uh, caniuse.com. Okay? So if you go to caniuse.com and uh, you, can, you, know, you can see all these technologies. Uh, so you can see there are a lot of technologies right there. Okay? And uh, you, can, you, know, you can go to particular technology like this and you can see uh, whether that uh, technology is being supported by different types of browsers and uh, the uh, and the mobile uh, browsers, you can see in this case uh, Canvas uh, is being supported pretty much all browsers and all versions of those browsers. Okay. Now, if you want to check a particular technology, so if I say WebSocket like the WebSocket like this, and uh, you can see WebSockets are being supported again pretty much all the browsers except mm -hmm. Opera Mini. Uh, this is actually for the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, mobile browser. Opera Desktop browser supports it, but Opera doesn't support it. But all the other browsers, whether they are desktop browsers or mobile browsers, support. Uh, the uh, this particular technology and you can actually take a look at the this global uh, which means that you know among all the browsers are being run at this point uh, 82.72% of the browsers support this technology so you can actually see the adoption rate of that technology okay so that is uh, can I use that come uh, another website is called the HTML5 readiness.com. So it gives you a little bit uh, uh, big picture kind of uh, the uh, screen here. So you can see 
uh, you know, these are individual, uh, this is a canvas, this is the uh, video, and uh, this is audio, and you can see uh, the uh, Chrome is actually supporting all these technologies, and this is for Safari, and this is for uh, the uh, uh, Opera, and you can tell, you know, the IE. Uh, IE 10 is actually doing pretty, uh, it's doing reasonably decent job uh, in terms of supporting HTML5, but you can see I the Internet Explorer 8 and 9, uh, their support HTML5 is pretty uh, skimpy. Okay? So this is uh, HTML5 readiness.com. Uh, you can also test uh, the uh, whether your particular browser is supporting HTML5 technologies. So you can actually go to HTML5test.com. So if I go over here, my Chrome browser, uh, its score is 512, uh, which is pretty decent. So I'm actually running pretty uh, up-to-date uh, Chrome. So out of 555 points, uh, it's actually 512. Okay. Uh, so, you know, you can see what uh, features are being supported by my browser, okay? Uh, now, if I actually try the same thing, so let me actually try the same thing with uh, the uh, Firefox. So let me try here. And uh, in this case, uh, the... So, so the score is uh, five, uh, five, five seventy, uh, 475, which is uh, lower than Chrome. Okay, and uh, let me see if I have an Internet Explorer on my machine. Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, so you know you can actually take a look at the uh, the score uh, of your particular browser on your machine. Okay, and you can try this one on your uh, mobile devices as well. And mobile devices typically have a lower score than desktop browsers. Okay. Uh, okay, and uh, here uh, you can actually, from the same site, uh, you can actually compare uh, different browsers. So here I'm going to actually compare Chrome version 24, Firefox version 18, and IE10. So let me just click this guy, and uh, you can see uh, the... Um... Oh, it looks like I have to add. Okay, so I'm going to just add. So, you know, Chrome, I'm going to... Uh... From, I'm going to try the latest, Chrome 39, 512, so that's what I'm using. And in terms of uh, Firefox, let me try the, again the latest version of the Firefox, which is 34. So that's 475, so that was what I was using. And in terms of uh, the, uh, let me see, uh, uh, let me try Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer, uh, I'm going to try 11. So that's 376. And you can also add uh, mobile browser. So let me try uh, Android, uh, the latest version. So that's 434. Okay. All right. So here you can actually compare uh, different uh, browser, different versions, and uh, you can see what kind of uh, you know support, uh, you know, what kind of technology, what kind of support it has, and some of the uh, you know technologies are being supported partially. Okay. All right, so that is, again, HTML5test.com. Uh, another technology is called the Modernizer. So Modernizer is a JavaScript library uh, that detects HTML5 and CSS3 support. So you want to use a Modernizer library to detect whether your partic whether a particular browser supports it or not, and then you're going to actually you know, the, uh, behave differently. Okay? Uh, one way, another way, another way of actually detecting the presence of a particular technology is, for example, whether you know the uh, the particular object is present or not. But that's really not the good way of actually detecting whether something is some technology is being supported in a particular browser or not. So uh, it is strongly recommended that you use a modernizer library. Okay, uh, by using modernizer library, you are basically you know shielded from uh, the uh, the detection scheme. Okay? I mean, if the detection scheme changes, you know, then uh, your application does not have to change. So this is useful library. 
Uh, there is what is called the HTML5 boilerplate. So if you go to HTML5 boilerplate, okay, so you can download uh, the uh, this boilerplate. So basically, this is the best practice collection of all HTML5 uh, support in a in a sense. Okay, so when you are doing HTML5 uh, development. Uh, you might want to actually start with this boilerplate because it actually you know, has a lot of uh, the uh, useful best practices right built in. Okay, so you know, so if there are in fact some browser differences, it will have some kind of you know browser differences kind of built in, so you can actually you know. So basically, all the boilerplate code and boilerplate uh, page is actually built for you uh, to do HTML5 uh, development. Okay, so this is actually pretty useful. To get started with uh, Chrome Frame, uh, this is, this Chrome Frame is actually for IE, uh, you know, eight and nine. So uh, if you if your environment uh, is still using uh, old version of IE, uh, such as eight and nine or even uh, seven. Uh, what you can do is that you can install this Chrome Frame. This is a JavaScript library, and uh, basically, you know, you can use HTML5 features on those old version of IE uh, by having this Chrome Frame library. Okay. Okay. So let's move forward. Uh, HTML5 and mobile applications. Uh, if you go to this website, uh, you can compare the usage of desktop and mobile browser. So let me actually go to this website. So this is the from this is from Stat Counter. So basically, you know, the, I like to know uh, the uh, the percentage of uh, desktop uh, browser versus the uh, mobile browser usage. Okay. The key point is still desktop browser is you know way way uh, much more being used. Okay, so yeah, okay, here we go. Okay, so it is still being used a lot more than mobile browser. But the trend is uh, you know mobile browser uh, mobile browser is actually picking up while desktop browser usage is actually coming down. Eventually, it will cross over. Okay, uh, which means that mobile is a mobile you know mobile device is becoming more and more important in computing landscape. Okay. So again, you can actually take a look at the uh, mobile browser support of HTML5 technologies from this HTML5test.com, as we have seen before. So now, uh, why you want to build your application, mobile applications, using HTML5 instead of using uh, native uh, the uh, platform? Uh, by native platform, I'm talking about the uh, iOS and uh, or Android. Okay. Uh, the first reason is it's easier to access and use uh, for your users. Uh, there is no need to download the applications. Uh, so native applications need to be downloaded from you know, the App Store. Uh, however, if you build your mobile applications uh, using HTML5, it's just another application people can go to a website and use. Okay? So it certainly is easier for the user to access and use. The biggest advantage of HTML5 based mobile applications over a native mobile application is a cross platform. So you use a single code base for all devices. Uh, unlike in native applications, you have to build an application for iOS and uh, another application for uh, Android and another application for Windows uh, mobile devices and things like that. Okay? Uh, so this is a huge, uh, the uh, huge inconvenience for the developers. Okay, so by using HTML5 based application, uh, the, by building HTML5 based mobile application, you are basically using a single code base that should be working on all the, you know, all the devices, regardless of their uh, the native platform. Uh, no need to write uh, device specific code, and uh, again, is Easier, it's definitely easier to maintain again because of the single code base rather than multiple code bases. Uh, HTML5 is standard based, so it uh, broad adoption is guaranteed and larger ecosystem and a safer path for the future because it's a standard. And because it's the HTML uh, base, it's web searchable and bookmarkable. 
Now, a lot of uh, the uh, the uh, uh, vendors wants to support uh, you know the uh, native applications, but they want to uh, build the application using HTML5. Uh, you know, the uh, taking advantage of the single code base. Okay, so that is in fact the uh, uh, a bridge technology. Uh, and PhoneGap is one of those. So basically, uh, PhoneGap, uh, it lets you build your mobile applications using HTML5. And uh, then, if you want to make it as a native application, it lets you, in fact, uh, make, you know, convert into native application so that you can have the native application to be posted maybe in Apple App Store. Okay, or Google, uh, the, uh, the Android, uh, the, uh, Android uh, Play Store and things like that. Okay. So this is the uh, bridge technology uh, to make your HTML5 application to uh, convert the a, sorry to convert your uh, HTML5 application to native application. Okay, so moving forward, uh, as I said, uh, HTML5 also have a significant influence in terms of how we build web application. So let's take a look at uh, this HTML5 web application architecture that is being adopted. In fact, this is actually what people uh, call a single page application architecture. So this is actually something uh, you know, that is gaining quite a bit of momentum these days. So web application architecture requirements. So it should provide high performance and uh, the scalability. Uh, should be provided and uh, low complexity, uh, both from developer standpoint as well as user standpoint, uh, easier to do develop and rich user experience from user standpoint and should be standard based. And also there should be vibrant ecosystem of the technology and uh, multi-device support should be there and uh, again mobile friendly. So these are uh, the uh, these are the requirements. So requirements of modern web application architecture. So if you see the evolution of web application architecture, in the beginning we have model 1 MVC and uh, nobody's using. Now uh, we have, and after that we have a model 2 MVC, which is a controller based. Okay, so in this case, the view is generated by the server per request still. And uh, the examples of model 2 MVC technologies include Strut, Spring MVC and Rails and things like that. Uh, there is another technology uh, evolution, uh, which is component-based. So in this case, the UI uh, component is provided. So like uh, JSF and Tapestry are examples of those. And the latest evolution phase is HTML5 enabled, rich client and thin server. Okay? So in this case, the view is generated at the client, not by the server. And client models synced with the backend data, typically uh, using REST uh, protocol. And uh, on the client side, uh, JavaScript MVC framework, uh, such as AngularJS and the Backbone.js, uh, uh, they are used uh, on the browser. And again, this is all HTML5 enabled. So HTML5 enabled rich client architecture is the latest, uh, the, uh, the phase of this web application architecture phenomenon. Again, in this, in this, in this architecture, the presentation, meaning the view, is generated at the client. Okay? And uh, because client is actually handling the user interaction, it does have its own controller on the left side. So the role of the backend is basically containing business layer and data access layer. Okay, and uh, so and then uh, this presentation layer on the client and the backend, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, layer, uh, they will be uh, communicated through uh, you know typically REST uh, protocol. So these are the characteristics of HTML5 enabled uh, rich client architecture. So all presentation handling is done on the client. Uh, so they are using HTML5 semantics uh, is heavy JavaScript based and also CSS is being used. Uh, the conversational state, uh, the, uh, such as a view or presentation state is kept on the client. Okay. So in, you know, so basically the server is stateless from the, from the standpoint of the, uh, the client. Uh, and uh, an HTML5 offline technologies could be used on the client to maintain the state. 
uh, the client is communicating with the server whenever it needs to fetch data uh, whenever it needs to perform some business logic then that's the time it's going to communicate with the backend server using various communication technologies again rest is actually primary example of the communication technology between client and server and it also could use html5 web sockets or next generation of uh, xml http request for ajax operation Uh, improve the performance because the performance uh, the uh, you know if you think about the any kind of a, if you actually see a performance aspects of any web application and it based on various factors uh, which include the server load uh, and the bandwidth usage and latency so these are performance aspects they need to be uh, you know gauged uh, uh, or measured the server load and bandwidth usage is reduced if you are using this client, rich client HTML5 enabled architecture, uh, because uh, you know server is not responsible for page generation, uh, and uh, that page does not have to be transported to the client because uh, you know the page or presentation is being generated on the client. Uh, user response time is obviously improved because client does not depend on the server to generate uh, the uh, the uh, the view. Okay. Uh, scalability is also greatly improved. So moving the presentation to the client also moves all the conversational state to the client. Uh, so you know the server does not have to maintain all client state. Okay. So thus improve the uh, scalability, meaning it should be able to handle a lot more client. Uh, so this leverages the processing power of the clients and distributes the per client session memory and processing requirement uh, to the client. Uh, transferring less data and not doing presentation generation should free up the server for handling more clients, okay? because the only role it has to play is performing some business logic and uh, data access. Okay? Uh, it should be easier to add additional servers. So if you need to support more clients, it's a matter of adding more servers. Uh, and one reason you could do that easily is because uh, there is no server state to be maintained, meaning the server does not have to maintain the client, maintain the state of the client, I should say. Uh, reduce the complexity is also achieved. The main reason complexity is reduced is because the control of the UI is one place rather than split between client and server. Okay, so in old uh, MVC2 based architecture, uh, the server is responsible for the uh, maintaining the state and generate uh, the in, generate the view. So in that case, the client has the client and the server. They split up the UI management. Now in this rich client, uh, the architecture basically the uh, client is the only one that is responsible for UI management. So uh, the complexity is greatly reduced. Uh, and uh, so UI events stay on the client and the server is no longer mac micromanaging the client by remote control. Okay. Also, the framework code that supports the application presentation layer can be implemented in one language rather than uh, you know, one language on the client and another language on the server uh, using maybe Java. Okay. Uh, uh, improved user experience, which we talked about already, more responsive to user actions, and offline usage of application is possible, again, leveraging HTML5 offline storage. Okay. So it is possible uh, the, uh, to handle all user interactions uh, on the client, even, uh, there, even if there is no connection to the server. Okay, so is, is HTML5 enabled rich client architecture is ready? Yeah, absolutely. So right now, as I said before, the single page architecture is actually gaining quite a bit of momentum uh, as a latest uh, the, uh, the trend for building web applications. So HTML5 is now pervasive and highly popular JavaScript libraries such as jQuery has been around for a long time. And the uh, emergence of client JavaScript MV star frameworks such as AngularJS and BackbondJS, you know, they are again very stable and established technologies. So uh, they could be used for building the single page architecture applications. Uh, JavaScript templates such as Mustache is available. Uh, and JavaScript engine is quite powerful uh, now, as we talked about. Okay, so it should be able to handle, uh, you know, heavy duty work on the client. And again, whenever there is a need to access the data or business logic, there is also a well-established protocol such as REST uh, to, to do that. 
So where can I get started? So uh, things a developer need to learn the front end. Uh, again, the the uh, you know the uh, uh, fluency in JavaScript uh, or CoffeeScript, which is the another language that gets translated into JavaScript, uh, is uh, a requirement. And uh, also learning HTML5 APIs, which we are learning uh, in this code camp. And also usage uh, of jQuery. I mean, understanding on the jQuery is a highly desirable skill set. And the template technology, such as the mustache, uh, the uh, is also actually quite useful technology to to master, and also uh, at JavaScript MVC frameworks such as the uh, Angular JS and Backbone JS. Right now, Angular JS seems to be a lot more popular than Backbone JS, so I recommend you to take a look at Angular JS as the uh, the uh, JavaScript MVC framework on the client. Uh, in terms of backend, uh, building RESTful services, you know, you should be able to actually uh, build RESTful services using various uh, the uh, you know technologies that could be uh, based on Node.js uh, or Play framework, a Rails framework or a Rails framework. Okay. Uh, in terms of tools, uh, you know, the IDEs are evolving to support the single-page architecture-based application development. Uh, for example, NetBeans 7.3 Plus supports HTML5 application development. Uh, the uh, one good way to get started is again from jpassion.com. Again, this is what you are learning today. Okay, so we cover pretty much everything HTML5 in hands-on style. Uh, HTML5 has uh, various uh, the uh, tutorial sites. So this is playgroundhtml5rocks.com. Uh, so here, you know, you can actually go to this website and you can actually uh, the uh, run the code. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know, then you can actually change the code and run it again, and things like that. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, uh, run the code. Yeah, type something here. Test run the code and uh, run it again. Yeah, it's just kind of you know the uh, um, yeah. So this is, should be available after restarting your browser. So that's actually the characteristic of uh, the uh, local storage. Uh, let me see. So maybe geolocation API. So if you run it and, uh, you know, it should actually allow and uh, then it will uh, it will display it. Okay. So I'm going to actually just not doing this because I want to actually do this one when we do geolocation uh, the presentation. Okay. So you can actually play around with this website. Okay, so you can change the code and you can run it again. Okay, uh, this is the uh, HTML5 also has a slides. Uh, so here you can actually play around various technologies. So you know, again, let me try uh, semantic markup here, and uh, then uh, you can uh, go to the next page. Okay, and uh, you can uh, you can actually see how things are working. Okay. Uh, and uh, let's see other technologies. So basically, it covers all the technologies, and you should be able to run it and see how things are working. Okay. So yeah. So this is uh, web workers. So let me just the uh, you know so find root without workers, and it takes a long time. But if you are using uh, the uh, if you are using uh, web workers, then it's supposed to be a lot faster. Okay, so uh, you can actually cover this presentation. Actually, cover all uh, HTML5 technologies by actually, you know, the uh, being able to run it and see the consequences of it. Okay, so this is another, this is another good site to take a look. <coughs> uh, another site is uh, HTML5 demos. Okay, so you go to this website, and again, you can actually play around all this guy. So let's see, a uh, simple video and filter with a canvas, and uh, so this is. Uh, and you can actually take a look at the, uh, you know, the source code. Okay. Uh, that is the html5demos.com. And uh, w3schools.com also has uh, some basic set of HTML5 uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, tutorials. Okay. Doesn't cover everything, but uh, at least it covers some, uh, the, I think it covers about 40 or 50% as far as I can tell. So that's another site you can actually go to. And uh, uh, HTML5rocks.com has advanced tutorial site. If you go over here, and uh, it has a very detailed uh, the uh, um, 
a blog or a tutorials okay so uh, in, in fact if you go to WebSocket if you say WebSocket and uh, you know there are many many uh, very detailed uh, very in-depth uh, the uh, um, um, in-depth um, uh, the tutorial as well as you know it does actually explain the code okay and you can certainly try the code as well okay so that's uh, that's the site uh, for advanced tutorials all right so that's the end of the presentation so let's just uh, uh,